Hey guys, welcome back to Donny Boy 73, the small engine doctor, and welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, December 30th, 2011. This is the last Q&A for the year 2011. On the next Q&A, it's going to be the year 2012. And I want to thank all you guys for all your support during the year of 2011. And for those of you who are watching for the first time, in this show every Friday, I answer small engine questions that I receive from my viewers. And you never know, your question might be featured in one of my shows. Before I get started, I want to talk about the snowmobile that I found the nuts in the carburetor. I want to thank all you guys for all your responses. It was really neat to hear all the experiences that you guys had with that. I even had some YouTubers send me some pictures. And in the next clip, I'm just going to show you a few pictures that a YouTuber sent me of what he found in some equipment. And thanks again for sending me these pictures. I'm sure everybody else will appreciate that as well. You can also post a video response to this video or the other video of the snowmobile with the nuts and the carburetor of your experiences that you've had with rodents putting stuff in your equipment. This was the actual snow machine that I did the repair on and some people were asking me if it was a single cylinder. Yes it is and it is also liquid cooled. The way you know if a snowmobile engine is liquid cooled is it will not have any fins around it. It's just nice and smooth like this and you're going to see some water pipes coming in and going out. And it's actually antifreeze that you put in the reservoir for the liquid cooling. I'm going to start off by reading you the first question I have for today. The question is because of the ethanol in the gas today, is it safe to run high octane gas in a four stroke engine like a generator or a snow blower? Well, it's probably safe to do so, and I'm sure a lot of people do that, but myself, I prefer to use the lower octane, like 91 or less, in my four-stroke engines. The reason why I use lower octane in my four-cycle engines is because I'm afraid that they might overheat a bit or cause some damage. I'm not totally sure about this. If you have more knowledge about this, you can post your comments underneath this video. I'm sure everybody else will appreciate that. I do understand a concern that many of you have regarding the ethanol separating itself from the fuel, especially in generators or other equipment that you don't use that often. What I do to combat this is I use fuel stabilizer every time I fill up my generator because I know it's going to sit there for a while and having the stabilizer in there, the fuel will last much longer and I don't need to worry about the ethanol separating from the fuel and causing little water droplets in the bottom of the fuel tank. I have seen some two cycle equipment where the manufacturer says you should use high octane fuel but I have never seen it for generators or snowblowers or any equipment with four cycle engines. If you're not sure in regards to your equipment, the best thing to do is contact the manufacturer and ask them the same question. The next answer I have today is in regards to a question I received last week. A YouTuber had asked me if he can use his old two cycle mixed fuel from the summertime in his car. Well, I did get some responses on this subject and even some car mechanics and most of them said that you can damage your catalytic converter. Some mentioned that they'll use it in an older vehicle because they may not be as sensitive, but today's vehicles are very sensitive to all the contaminants going through the exhaust pipe. And you don't want to plug up your catalytic converter with that because it can be really expensive, especially on today's new cars. So the bottom line is don't use mixed fuel in your car. And thanks again for all those who commented on that question. Sometimes I get questions in regards to the linkage configuration on snowblower engines, especially those with Tecumseh engines. From time to time I get people who take these apart and then email me to ask me exactly how they go back on. Well, if you run into this problem and you have a Tecumseh engine on your snowblower, I do have a video that shows exactly how the configuration is for all the linkages. And here's the video, it's called 8 to 11 horsepower Tecumseh carburetor linkage configuration. I'm going to put the link to this video underneath this video here so you can refer to it. It's a very detailed video and you're going to know exactly how these parts go back on. So go check out the video if you're wondering if you've got your linkages on properly. In my next question today, YouTuber was asking me if you can buy just the drive ring for the transmission of these MTD snowblowers. I know this is a Cub Cadet and this one a Mastercraft, but these are all made by MTD. Apparently the YouTuber was told he had to buy the whole assembly here, but you do not have to do that. The ring does come off this assembly here. 
And if you have the older snowblower like I just showed you, you're going to need the ring which is just over 4 inches and is MTD part number 7350243. And if you have a newer MTD snowblower, this ring here is just over 5 inches, approximately 5.5, five and, and it's MTD part number 7350054. It's much cheaper just buying the ring than the whole assembly, and it's easier to put on as well. I do have a video that shows how to replace the drive ring on your MTD snowblower, and I'm going to put the link below this video today. So this will be the last video for the year 2011. I want to thank you for all your support during this year. I look forward to posting many more videos in the year 2012 for you guys to watch. So keep watching, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.